This is Ground Affected. My name is Brent. And welcome to that tiny little piece of dry paint that shoots out of the end of your airbrush because you didn't clean it properly. This video is going to be an idiot explains to other idiots how airbrushes work. Of course, since I made one about brushes, everybody asked about airbrushes. And this time I'm going to try and explain to you how I use my airbrush, how to keep it going, how to maintain it, and just try and give you a rough overview about airbrushes and what to do when you get your airbrush first. And not that I'm an expert in airbrushes, but at least mine still sprays. So the first thing I'm- Oh god, don't f knock that over. These are the things I've collected during my time of airbrushing. In fact, one of these airbrushes I had before I even airbrushed. That's a funny thing though. So I'm going to start off by just naming everything that's on the table and roughly explaining what these things are. First things first, of course, these are airbrushes. This is my current airbrush. This is an Iwata Eclipse. This is a very cheap airbrush that you get on Amazon. This is a very similar one to the Amazon special. This was my first expensive airbrush and this is made by Hobby Knox. The problem I have with this one is it's extremely difficult to get needles and nozzles and that is something when you're dealing with airbrushes you're gonna probably need to change at some point. This is something you can get for very cheap on Amazon. It's basically just somewhere where you can empty out whatever's left in your airbrush as well as to clean out your airbrush. The next most important tool is something like this. This is a very sharp pointed metal piece, but this you're gonna use to clean out the nozzle and that's gonna be extremely helpful when you do get a clog. And while I go through this video, you're gonna notice I probably don't know the correct names of half the parts that I'm talking about. But I don't care what the names are, I'm just gonna show you from my view what works and how to make these things work the easiest way possible. Not so long ago, I was a beginner myself. A lot of the simple stuff is just missed and skipped over. I feel like I can probably fill a gap by explaining some of the things that just weren't explained to me on a simple beginner's video of how to airbrush for models. These wire brush cleaners, this is something that you're going to need to clean out the inside of the cup and probably up and down this tube here. And then you're going to need certain things that go with it. However, I can tell you now that these can be substituted for water in most cases. And if you are 3D printing and you have alcohol, you can also use alcohol as an airbrush cleaner as well. I think you should probably be aware though that the cheaper the airbrush, probably find the seals will be cheaper as well and they may break down a little bit sooner than if you were just using an airbrush cleaner. And what you can't see on the table because I just cannot put that on the table is my air compressor. This pipe is connected down to the air compressor at the bottom. If you're into 3D printing, something else you can do is print yourself a stand like this. This is the first thing that I printed and this holds the airbrush like that on your table and it makes it so much easier for you to just be able to put your airbrush down and pick it up and work with it and it will still hold quite a full cup so that's also quite important I also use that to fill it so I can put my airbrush down and I can use that to fill it and I can mix things up in there. Some people like to mix the airbrush paint separately and pour that into the airbrush cup however the way that I do it is straight into the airbrush itself. So I'm going to go over a couple of things you can do when you get your first airbrush. The most important thing you can do is of course familiarize yourself with how the airbrush works. Most airbrushes will come with a tool. This is for you to be able to undo the front section. The best way to do this, you want to preserve your needle and make sure you do not damage your needle. The most important thing is that needle tip and the way that it seats nicely inside here. The way that I've seen the people do this in the airbrush shop is to open the back of the airbrush, loosen up the needle and pull it back slightly and by pulling it back like this you've now protected the needle on the inside here however you don't want to pull it too far back that it comes through here then you can unscrew the front piece and you can then take off the nozzle not all airbrushes are exactly the same but the idea remains pretty similar amongst most of them an example of a slightly different way that they use to mount and fit these nozzles looks something like this where there is a different tool that's needed to be able to grab that piece so you can unscrew that piece and then that comes out so in order to take the needle out what you do is you push it back forward again and then you pull the needle out and the needle is available for you to do any maintenance you need to do this piece at the back will unscrew be careful this usually has a spring somewhere within this piece so if you unscrew it it might shoot completely out and then the other thing that comes out is usually the trigger button 
One of the things you want to make sure you do when you clean your airbrush and you want to put it back together again is to lube it up. I have this Iwata lube. I'm not sure what kind of lube it is. It's probably just some kind of machine oil essentially. The other thing you may notice about this airbrush is that I don't have this little cover on the front. I just find that for me, I tend to get a lot of stuff built up on the inside of it. It drives me absolutely up the wall. One of the quickest ways to spray a little piece of dried paint is by not noticing that this little thing is filled up with dried paint from your last five minutes of work and to pick it up again and spray out whatever pieces have been stuck there and just lift it up and now stuck on your model and you having a bad time and a lot of people will say this is ridiculous and i'm probably asking for trouble but this is one of the main reasons why i keep a spare nozzle and needle around just in case i do happen to damage that you do not ever want to bend this tip get a hook in it damage it or blunten it in any way and while i have the airbrush out i'm going to show you very quickly how i mix my paints and kind of what consistencies i'm looking for one of the things you can do is use something like this which is already an airbrush paint this is another one this is a vallejo air color this is army painter air colors they, they are both designed to go in the airbrush they're extremely thin and ready to go pretty much off the bat. So one of these you can pour in directly into your airbrush cup and be ready to spray straight away. Very quickly, how do I change the colors? What I do is I put my airbrush into that machine and I take my water cup and another brush, an old brush that I have, and I pick out some water and place it into the cup first, spray out what's left of the paint that's inside and then I use the, the little brush that I have to clean out all the paint on the insides of the cup. And I do this as soon as I'm done with the color. If I'm done and I'm not gonna use the color, I do that immediately. Spray that out, give it one more rinse out. Careful not to press down too much on the needle, but you are brushing the needle ever so slightly as well as the insides of the cup. Spray the rest of this all out completely and we'll be ready to roll with a different color. I'm going to show you how I use this with a normal paint that's not designed to go through the airbrush immediately, but I'll show you how to do that anyway. So first things first, no fancy tricks, no special liquids, nothing fancy at all. We're going to just use water. So using the same paintbrush method I used for cleaning the airbrush out, I'm going to pick up some water and I'm going to rub it on the side of this cup. This is going to already put water down into the shaft so that we're not pouring thick paint into there and making it difficult for us to clean up. Place in a little bit of the paint that you're going to use and depending on the amount of paint that's in there, I will then use water and a brush to figure out the consistency that I need my paint to be. This is something that comes over time. It's something that you learn the more you do it, how thin or thick you want it. Sometimes certain paints have to be much thinner to go through because they dry on the tip and make it more difficult to work with and other paints just seem to work extremely well and as you can see it's that simple that was how quick it took to change the color and i'm on a different color completely already the other thing you can do if you want to just modify a color that's in there is you can add for example other colors to it let's say we wanted to make that color a lot lighter so I would add again more water to that and give it a good mix on the inside. And as you can see how it looks in there, it kind of looks sort of milky in a way, but you get different effects from thicker and thinner paints as well. That's just a little bit more advanced. So for now, just get your airbrush working. This is one of the easiest ways of doing it. And as you can see, that's a whole lot lighter than what the other color was. And it's pretty much that simple really. And what you can see is that my airbrush is empty, but there's a load of paint on the inside. So now that I'm done with my airbrush, the most important thing to do is to clean it out immediately. Put my paintbrush inside, dip it into the water, put more water in it, give it a little mix around to make sure that I've got everything off the edges and the sides. Clean it out, do it again, clean it out, do it again. That will be cleaning everything that's on the inside and backwashing the airbrush essentially. One other thing that is extremely important about airbrushes is to use a really good compressor as best as you can afford. Of course, you can buy all of these things for extremely cheap and you can also spend millions and millions on them. But 
At the end of the day, get what you can afford and use that to the best of your ability until you can afford better and then you buy better. And even though I didn't realize how much information goes into an airbrush video, now I know I didn't even cover half of the basics. We've just pretty much We've just pretty much gone through not even a small percentage of going over airbrushes and how to use them. However, what I've showed you will definitely help you to get yourself going with the airbrush and hopefully explain how to clean and change paints during and after the whole entire process. That was one of the main things that I wasn't really sure about how to do it and this will show you exactly how to do that. And since you've made it all the way to the end of a video of me waffling about a load of stuff about some freaking pen brushes that shoot paint out the other side like some futuristic kind of crazy magical unicorn freaking dust well we've gotten to the point where you have to make a choice either you're gonna like the video and click subscribe and possibly ring the notification bell or you might just click dislike and probably want to fuck off. But before you do that, I've got a couple of people I need to thank for joining the Patreon in the last week. Vinicius Gallo, Just Chris, Matt Duraka, and Hoof Arted. Thank you dudes so much for your support. I really never thought that it would come to something like this where people would be supporting me for making videos about the thing that I actually really enjoy doing. What a weird world this has become, but I'm really enjoying the time making these videos for everyone and I really enjoy seeing progress and a lot of people that have picked up the videos and learned something from the videos makes me so happy to know that they're not just a waste of time and they are actually helping people that's one of the best things i could ever imagine i never thought it would get to this point but we are here and things are happening so i do appreciate any and all support of course not everybody can afford to join the patreon however there are many other ways to support the channel one of the most important ways is probably to like the video leave a comment in the section below and if you know someone who this video or any of my other videos may help in their endeavors to get along with this hobby then perhaps share the video with them most importantly just watch the video is the biggest way you can support the channel and i appreciate everybody who watches all the way up until the point you get the dolphin sound now if you didn't like it just f off man thank god i didn't knock this freaking statue off the table it was so close